<laughs> they are finesse. Do you know what city we live in? Oh. Like people, people laugh, yeah. People laugh, but in fact, this city is full of hustlers. Like oh. this, this I am not even surprised a little bit. Like I also came because I'm I'm a freshie in it. I was not ready for London City. Let me tell you guys this straight yeah. off the bat. The amount of times I've been scammed in this city. Yeah, yeah, fam, yeah. I've yeah. learned I've learned so the harsh ways. So If this thing don't die, don't don't pop off, man. You might as well die, bro. You might as well be dead, fam. And that, so, man has no option apart from winning, fam. Because I will not be happy in life in any other place apart from the winning spot. Mm. I might as well be dead, fam. Really. Cadet was someone obviously with immense amounts of potential and was just on his way up. Mm. But every time you're gonna think of this guy and listen to his music, it's gonna be with this legacy of, look at how much this guy had done in such a short time and how much bigger this guy was gonna get. And all the other people that are gonna branch off wanting to be and do, cause he was an incredible so, storyteller. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, for yeah. me, until I saw Shiro's story, Cadet was probably my favourite, you know, UK story. I think yeah. the stereotype was one of the first things. And yeah. I was like, fam, this is probably one of this is probably the most honest song I've heard since um Suicidal Thoughts by Biggie. Yeah. Favourite memory of him for me would be you know when he remixed um Ooh That was a banger. That was a flipping banger. Oh. And he had like all the like Twitter or like social media comedians in it. Then he had those three boys dancing because they just popped on social media. Then he had like artists like Miss Bangers come out. It, it was just that, that's my I think for me and obviously his like little car freestyles. But for me that was my highlight of like Cadet. Okay. That's cute. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. I don't think I have a particular highlight. Um I think that he was a highlight. So I mean that because I feel like his personality was so huge. It was so big. Um so I think yeah, every every person that kind of spoke to me, if his name ever came up, because he'd done quite a few freestyles and um, was involved with Link Up TV quite a lot as well. Um, and any time that people kind of spoke about him, it was always kind of just like, he's just loud. He's just this really loud, I'm huge bubbly. character, yeah. Obviously, I think one of the last things I saw was him driving, and this was like around midnight. So I messaged him, I was like, bro, is this real? Nothing, it didn't go through. And this is when I woke up in the morning and I saw the news and I was like, nah, this is, this is mad. Like, is this really happening? And so I start seeing it everywhere and I start seeing the newspapers and I was like, wow. Like, this is actually real. Mm. Like, cadets gone. And I was like, a moment, you have to take a moment to yourself. It's like, why? Like, why God? Do you know what I mean? Mm. In, a, in a sense. And that's just me being real because obviously I know cadet. Do you know what I mean? So... I don't know how he meant to everyone else, but I feel like I, I was I was happy to just see everyone come together, mm. put him up on his inst put him up on their Instagram and just show love. And I hope everyone does come out to um what is it again? The rated show. The rated show. I hope everyone does come out to the rated show mm. and obviously show support and obviously give their condolences and stuff. Well, the advice tune was was in the charts for ages, and it, it I think it was in the top twenty at that point. Mad. It was looking at top fifteen, top twenty one or two, and. The thing that really upset me with Cadet was because I'm from Lewisham, so like with a lot of the South London, like a lot of people that were based around us, we couldn't really listen to if they weren't from Lewisham for some reasons, didn't it? <laughs> so like people that were from Peckham, we couldn't listen to. Wow. People from Greenwich, we couldn't listen to. People right. from Croydon, we couldn't listen to. It was a strictly Lewisham or East London. That's all we could listen to. And like indirectly, we still used to listen to Cadet. When there was a whole gyp set, that whole movement. So, Kreps, Conan, Reds, um, Cadet. Like we all used to listen to, even like the the um, the SMN guys that like, we used to listen to as well. And what what upset me with that was that from all them years ago. So we're talking about 06, 07, those early times there, till now, where Cadet has been such a prominent name and a prominent figure, and he had that breakthrough. And what upset me the most was that you escaped all the trials and tribulations of ends. You escaped a violent, you know, 
uh, a violent past. You escaped uh, gang violence. You escaped all of that. You had that moment, that breakthrough, and it's like as if it was robbed from him. That's what hurt more than anything. But also, it was actually his recent success on advice, because that is what it's called. Yeah, advice, yeah, with Dino, because Mm. um, I felt like he was finally, you know, just having, and I don't really like to say, because a lot of people were saying, finally getting the recognition that he deserves. And of course, um, yeah, he is, Finally getting recognized. Yeah. He was finally he getting recognized, but, but, but I just—I I also feel like he was still being recognized to, throughout his life. If that makes sense, yeah. I don't know. Does that make sense? As in, he was still appreciated by his yeah. core fans. Yeah, he did. He was. Um, he got throughout his life, though. but I just think that the reason why I like advice is because I feel like he started to believe. Does that make sense? He mm. started to believe that. Oh my gosh, like I can make this bigger. But I think that his core supporters and his core fans have always been behind him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Sure. I mean, I didn't know Cadet like that, but I met him, like, once at Represent, and he was cool. Like, I don't have anything negative to say, like, um, I've never had anything negative to say about Cadet like that. Like, I feel like everyone's... He's just been one of them people that have been around for so long, like, and he seems like a nice person. Like, there's people that are... There's people that are genuinely, like, annoying or bad mind, but he's not that person. Like, he's Mm. always come off as a genuine, lovely guy, so... Never had anything bad to say. I think the tributes are really nice. I think it was... What's his name? Um... Dino, yeah, his tribute was really nice. I think that was really sweet. Um, it's a shame that, I know like when I was on Twitter, there was a lot of people that were Muslim that were quite annoyed with the fact that people were spreading his music because and apparently in Islam, when someone dies, you're not supposed to spread their sins. It's meant to, it's something that you're meant to not. It's kind of like if a Muslim person dies, you're not supposed to speak of the bad that they've done mm. or the, the sins that they've done. So I think in his music, there has been a lot of, you know, his music's quite explicit, so they've been saying, like, people stop need to stop spreading his music, and I think that included the tributes. Mm. So it's quite a conflicting thing, because I'm not Muslim, mm. so I don't know, I can't be like, why are you guys saying this? If that's his religion and that's his culture, then I see that side, but mm. then it's like, how do you tell people not to celebrate his life? Like, I am ready, I am ready to die. The only thing I ask of when I die is just, like, let me die in a way that people, you know, let me die in a way that inspires people, that people want to carry on my legacy, that, you know, I'm not just some forgotten name. Yeah, so yeah, watching yeah. this, I think as soon as Cadet died, um, I wanted to make a tribute. Like, yeah. so I got on my tablet, I was like, cool, I'm going to do this piece. And fam, I wasn't thinking of nothing else besides I need to make this guy the best piece I could do. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And, like, I didn't even know how big... Like, I knew Cadet was big, but, like, I didn't know to the extent of the what it was. You get yeah, me? Yeah, so yeah, I didn't... Yeah. At the time, I was on... I, I was so last minute. I think mm. my girl was on the underground. Mm. That my girl just took a video of, of me drawing just a piece on mm. my iPad, uploaded on Instagram. That piece went viral. Bigger than anything I've ever had on my page. Yeah? And I've had big, big posts on my page. Yeah. Then the next day, I uploaded the final artwork. That even went... To, that doubled the virality of the, mm. of the yeah. other one. And so, then... MTV, MTV hit me up and MTV were like, bro, can we please use this on, they're doing a, a tribute on the second. Mm-hmm. But then I really started seeing fam, like it's in moments like this, you realize the impact of an individual. Oh, you know what I'm course. saying? So there's a part of me that I hear you and I'm just like, fam, it's so sad mm-hmm. and it's so, but there's also a part of me saying that if I'm going to go, this is how I want to go. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? This is the, this is, I want people to be, to be like, you know, to be jo- celebrating me and to celebrate my legacy and for everyone to kind of be joining that. So mm-hmm. there's a part of me that's just like, fam, like, what a, what a legend. You sent a message. You sent a message saying, saying that you're working with me. You sent a message, the first day I messaged you, you sent a message saying we're working with Mixtape Madness and all these people, just lying, feeding on young creators. Do you know what, do you know what that sends, bro? Do you know what that does to people? You're sending full you know what? saying that, like shut the, up, shut up, they, let me speak. Shut up, up, let me speak. Shut up, let me speak. I'm, I'm talking, you're going to listen. You're going to listen. You're going to listen. You're gonna listen. He's a waste, man. He's not, you, Ghost Banks. I wonder what your real name is. He's a ghost. Ghosts don't have Your real name is going to be Waste Man. That's your real name. I am I'm going to give you that. Bellow's going to give you that name. Waste Man. You're a dickhead. Wow. On site. Came straight at you, mate. I'm sorry about that. I don't like people like that because did you see like a lot of the people that he was getting at you were like young, um, new artists that were really like, you know, you know when you have something getting, you're trying to get out there 
and it's it's not easy and then you have someone take advantage of that because you're young you're inexperienced mm -hmm. you're struggling and you're desperate because he I'm preyed desperate. on the fact that he was that they were desperate to me you're a piece of shit man because you can only imagine wow. how those people felt no you're a fucking idiot well i mean he dm me before about like about bare it. dms like about his artists that he's been apparently pumping money into and he's got bare money to spend if i could like do some radio spins or like if I can like or we should work together because I had I joined a, a new job and if we should like work together and stuff and I don't really know what to say I just took it in like oh, okay cool, cool but I didn't really know him so I didn't really follow up with it but to then hear all of this I didn't take the messages as like oh he's fraud I just took it as just another person that has something that they want to work on it's like okay cool but it's just one of them dms that you just get him across and whatever okay cool mm -hmm. but to see that he's done all of this one I want to know like why it took Alex, for people to speak up, like, I don't get it. True. Why did no one speak That's before? If everyone's been getting if all these grime MCs or whoever rappers have been getting ripped off and you lot are quick to do fire in the booth or do them songs or whatever, how comes no one mm. spoke before? I don't understand. <laughs> Girl, this. Do you know what city we live in? Oh. Like, people, people laugh, yeah? People laugh, but fam, this city is full of hustlers. Like, oh. this... This, I am not even surprised a little bit. Like, I also came, because I'm, I'm a freshie, innit? I was not ready for London City, let me tell you guys this straight yeah. off the bat. The amount of times I've been scammed in this city. Yeah, yeah, fam, yeah. I've, yeah. Learned, I've learned so the harsh way. So when I watch these things, there's part of me, I think it was in the group chat, innit? People yeah, are just yeah, like, yeah. oh, these guys are stupid. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. no one went to go. But if your hopes and dreams are there, you know? And I don't know why we think that just because someone says... They are. They work for this company on their public profile. It actually yeah. legitimately means they do, as if there's like some like policing system that's like, hey, you don't work for Spotify. Why are you saying that you work for Spotify? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I've got three opinions on this. Yeah, I've got three opinions on this. First and foremost, I want to say, big up Ghost Banks. Now, the reason why I'm saying big up Ghost Banks is because he was able to do all of this fuckery for this long and create a buzz. So what? many people being taken advantage yeah, of. Yeah, what did you think about that? He was able to get away with it for so long with so many people. Um, I think that they should have been smarter. Mm -hmm. I think that there's some of the screenshots that some people have been submitting mm -hmm. um, that is very obvious um, that it wasn't, um, it wasn't legit. Yeah, um, you should do your research I think, that money. Yeah, I think that you should definitely be smarter when you're dealing with people like this and doing deals and, and those types of things and have agreements, at least have some sort of, something that you can be, you know, covered. Um, but I'm, I'm not surprised by his behaviour. And behavior. do things through PayPal. Do it, through, do it yeah, through, pay through PayPal. If you didn't know, you could get a refund. Yeah, if you, you do it through, through services. PayPal. If you do a bank transfer, you can't get it back because it looks like you've willingly transferred exactly. the money over. Like, so PayPal is definitely something that... If you're going to take away anything from me calling this man um, a waste man and from Patty also agreeing that man's a dickhead, <laughs> it will be, if you're going to do these things, yeah, use PayPal. Even with, like, you know when you've got a Twitter event mm. and they're reselling tickets? When I resell or I buy tickets, I tell them straight, we're doing it through PayPal. That's a and then, very, very Honestly, good idea. even like, I was, so I wanted to sell my wireless ticket. Mm -hmm. um, wireless, so I bought a VIP ticket, it was like a hundred and... She only gets VIP tickets for the... Because man's got money like that, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. Um, and I told the girl, I was like, let's do, I, I had to pay a five pound fee. I had to pay because I was selling it. But I told the girl, like, let's do it through PayPal mm. so that I can't run off with your ticket. Mm. I, don't know. I think it'd be kind of loud to have ghost banks on there, just to say, speak. It would be very good. So very loud. Like I'm, I'm inviting you. Come coach him out to have yeah, a conversation. Yeah, no, it'd be good. Like, to honestly, see his do you know what I mean? Because I'm like, number one, I just want to know why. I mean, just why lie? Because now your name is like, somewhat tarnished now, isn't it? Like, in a way, and I feel like, was it really worth it though? Do you know what is mean? it really tarnished though? True. You know how we cancel people, but are they really cancelled? Maybe. He could probably go into a label meeting and still be fine. If he really wanted Maybe. to. Maybe. But everyone reads Twitter though. Mm. Everyone mm. is on Twitter. Don't think people don't. Mm. Read. True, everyone true, is true, on Twitter. True. There are people create fake accounts just to see what's happening on Twitter. True, true, very true. people see. A fake account? No, my account's live. <laughs> <laughs> my account's live still. <laughs> my account is live still. And then it was just cancelled.
Just like that, no explanation, no nothing. Is this guy in, in prison right now? No, he's just on Instagram How? Live, licking but his lips with his red, red, red do-rag. How? I don't understand, and guys. And saying that he's a uh, creative someone? director for MDV, so... But how? Like, how is how is my man not in prison? Like, I just don't understand. Like, it's actually a crime to 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 sell a service and yeah. not deliver on it. Yeah. Like, if people can prove that they've paid for something, like for instance, if I if if you said right, mm. you could do so and so, and then said pay me via pay- PayPal, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and know. yeah, and you didn't deliver that. I could yeah. just go to PayPal and say, look, here's the evidence. This guy said this he was gonna do this, yeah, yeah, but yeah, here's yeah. the evidence of screenshots. This didn't happen. Mm-hmm. The money gets refunded to me. Your your ba- your bank gets yeah. contacted. Whatever. Um, but in terms of something this big mm-hmm. and this many people, mm-hmm. like and how? Now, I I hear you a million percent. Now you need to remember the harsh reality is is that in the black culture, what's one of the main prominent things that we say you should do? You don't do? snitch, but is does this count as not? No, snitching? no, no. I'm not saying that. I'm I'm not justifying it. Saying that oh, this classified as snitching and whatnot, whatnot. People just have it in their mind that cooperating or filing a complaint or report towards the police is seen as snitching. Thinking about it a little bit more, I am a little bit angered about those little cuties that might have just think might have just been thinking that they yeah. were going to catch a break. And like, yeah, that's a big been platform. So heartbroken, like the boy. I think on his intro, on his bio, I think he wrote something like um, Spotify, something in his bio you a did. long time ago. And I think that the reason why I he followed still had him, it. I think that the reason why I followed him cool. was because of that, that yeah. thing in his bio. I thought, oh, yeah. okay, I'll be able to approach him maybe to be on a panel. Um, I think I was talking about having someone from Apple Music, having someone from Spotify, having someone from and different things like that. So I remember you connecting know, with him. Nobody and knows just him. Finding out, you know, saying, oh, you know, you do this. Little did I know. Oh. It was just somebody that made playlists. Patty, what about mm. when he said, oh, eight o'clock, I'm going to reveal all, oh, I'm going to tell the truth on Instagram did Live. Did he say that? Did you say anything? Yeah, he said, that's what he said. He was like, yeah, you guys have been chatting it. shit on my name. This is that. Even me, I didn't tweet about it. I didn't say nothing because I was like, you know, yeah, it's not, it's not, I, mm, I'm and not And also, I'm not, I'm just, think, and I've said this anything. before and I'll say it again, right? I'm not a fan of all of this, like super tweeting all of these bad things about him on social media and all of this. I am. I'm not really a fan of that because to be honest, the boy's fraudulent. He's still going to continue to be fraudulent, whether you tweet or not. So I'm just not really... I think it'll be harder for him, though. I think this is the thing... The boy will change his app. But Do you know what he looks like? Yeah. Oh. He's on the timeline. I think with... <laughs> <laughs> the girl thing was not my choice. I would not have, you know, done that. But me me just going there and being a housewife and just seeing a home and them taking care of me is not really in any way help. Like, I'm not paying for their bullets. I'm not paying for them to be trained. Yeah, I will admit, I was the one that made the choice. <coughs> Even though I was only 15 years old, I did have, I, I do have, like, I, I could make my own decisions back there. I do have the, the like, mentality. <laughs> it's too funny. <laughs> They're going to actually intro that part of me laughing as well. <laughs> um, um, obviously, according to the question, we don't know the full ins and outs, what's going on. We only know what the public have decided to let loose and tell us. What I must say, based on the evidence that's been presented to us, does she come across as a threat now? Now, when I saw the interview this, at the second one, I haven't seen the first one, the second one, which is when she received a letter from Home Office yeah. saying that she is not a UK citizen. Okay, they then. revoked it. You're not allowed Kill back in the me. country. That's it. Do you know what I mean? Um, I think for me, okay, cool. The UK are well within their rights to see who they allow in the country. That's fine. Cool. Um, she's been through a lot of trauma in her life. Obviously, she obviously I think was it two kids that started already, mm-hmm. um, seen a lot of things. My whole thing is that I'm not my anger is not solely towards her. Obviously, she's definitely part to blame. You are in charge of your own actions. She's still very very young. Um, my whole anger is towards the parents. Where were the parents in her life? Yes. Because she left the UK co- to go and join ISIS. <laughs> Do I need to say anything more? Do I, like, fam, no one, no one who's not a threat says, you know what? Fuck these UK people. They all need to die, so I'm going to go to ISIS to go and learn how to kill everyone. And I'm just like, you know what? I didn't actually do it. I was in the kitchen the whole time. I'm, I'm safe, guys. I didn't actually... No, your brain is... It's not your Is that what hand. she said? Yeah, she said, guys, I was in the kitchen. I was a housewife for all the years I've been in Syria. I'm not a threat. I'm like, so why did you get on the plane in the first place? You know what I'm did saying? You say she was with the jihadi leaders or something. Like yeah, that. she was married. She, I think she was married or with one of the guys that was was in ISIS, isn't it? Or IS, Islamic State. Cool. Crud! 
Yes, I believe that at 19, you closed the threats to the UK because bang, bang, money. there was a boy. Oh, I wish I even, you know, really got the, the full name, you know, but I can't remember it. But there was a boy who was responsible for trying to um, blow up a train. Ah, oh. and he had two foster parents. He came as an asylum seeker in the UK when he was underage because he said he was underage at that time and mm. our the way our society is they took him in and um he was fostered by two white a, a white couple two two white people el slightly elderly and they loved him they cared they didn't see any sign of any sort of Super weird self. behavior and then he tried to detonate i believe he tried to detonate and then he, and and he was young when he did so so for the reason, because based on that one, I really wish I had the, you know, you just wish you did your homework. Why did you have her Like, I really wish I did my homework because I really would have got this name, mate. I tell you, this boy, <laughs> sure, I tell you. He, was a, he was a culprit. He set up the bomb to try to detonate and his foster mum was like, I, like, do you know what I mean? But the bottom line is he was young. This girl, Begum, is young. So she's liable for everything. First of all, the UK are well within their rights to revoke a citizenship Brooks. because she's got dual nationality, whatever you want to call it. For the minute they find out she's actually from Bangladesh, mm. I think, they are allowed to take away her citizenship because and give her citizenship in her second country or for whatever, which is Bangladesh. So she actually could go to Bangladesh mm. and live and be fine. However, she's saying she doesn't know Bangladesh to go there. Mm -hmm. But you didn't know Syria. Exactly. You didn't, you didn't know, know Syria. Syria. So why can you go to come, Syria? Come one more time. You didn't know Syria. So why did you go to Syria, my friends? You went to Syria. And why did your parents allow you to go to Syria? You literally went to Syria, but you're saying you don't know Bangladesh. Where you're from, you don't know. Well, you need to know, get to know them. Because end of the day, I'm not saying, I have, I'm two-sided. Like, part of me is very, like, anti like no like you shouldn't be allowed in i don't care if you're 15 14 13 like however old you are i i don't understand radicalism like, i never will because i'm not in that world mm. i'm not some expert that learned. i've never been exposed to that I've life. Been, exactly yeah, but i can see like obviously she's been groomed and radicalized online or mm. whatever you want to call it but she's been groomed and she's taken herself off with her friends i'm sure her family didn't know taking herself off to go to syria to live the life she thought she was going to have in syria mm. fine but you must understand that once you have gone to join a terrorist group or whatever you've gone to go and do, you cannot now expect people to be like, oh, it's fine, you've been groomed, we understand. What kind of message does that send to the rest of the world exactly. if we now accept someone that has gone to join a terrorist, anti-establishment, anti-whatever, mm. and you now just say that you can come back in the country and sit down and relax? Shamima. Shmima's a dickhead, man. No, <laughs> let me just say it straight. Shmima's a dickhead, man. <laughs> Listen, that lack of sympathy, yeah, is not going to work. All that, oh, you know, so, so. that sympathy is not going to work, G. You joined ISIS. <laughs> you joined ISIS. I don't care whether you was a cleaner. <laughs> I don't care whether you was a cook for them. I don't care what your position is. I don't care if you were disabled. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You could have been in a wheelchair. I don't like. care what type of PTSD you got from your experience being in ISIS, yeah? Like, bro, it's air. Don't come back. <laughs> don't come back. We don't want you. Fam. <laughs> Honestly, couldn't do was fucking toss, mate. Like, you went to Syria to go and do ISIS and terrorism. Am I meant to feel sorry for you? And you want to come and back to And also, you probably had that baby in really unhealthy conditions for that baby as well. I just Because don't you were care. doing hide and seek. So, because you were... You, it was... <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> but it's true. That's what you were doing, hide and seek. That's why. It's not the baby's fault, but you probably had the baby. The baby that passed, God made, made the baby rest in peace. It was because of you. That the baby passed because you have you made the baby. The baby, this is the baby was funny. born in I just don't care about her. The baby was one hundred percent born because look at the way they're they're rebels. You know what I mean? You wouldn't have gone to like mainstream hospitals. You're I just don't understand. Yeah. So I just don't understand what it was you were seeking in <laughs> Syria. I don't think. <laughs> like honestly, it's like me saying now. Like I I, I just don't get so, it. Exactly. What does that send to other people that are radicalized or believe in terror or whatever it is that are within our country or with? abroad like what mm. kind of message does that said i so feel they definitely, like they definitely they definitely like obviously use her as an example I'm yeah she's sure. an example and i'm not i'm sorry is it javid or whatever his name is sajeev or whatever yeah the home secretary i understand exactly why he did it because end of the day i feel like 
what does a threat look like? Mm -hmm. A threat could be a, a, a 25 year old white man on the train and you won't know that he's a threat. You won't know he's about to let off the train. Do you know what I mean? Well, I don't have an image of what a threat looks like. Right. Everyone looks different. Mm -hmm. So yes, this 90 year old girl doesn't look like a threat. I'm not saying she's a threat, but we don't know that either. Like none of us know what could happen. Like mm -hmm. I don't know what she wants to come and do. Wow. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, this story is too funny. It's I'm mad. sorry. It's just mad. It's too funny. Fam, you know the saying, you made your bed. Yeah, you have to Now lay in it. You know, yeah. this, there's no other word for it. And it's like, fam, just allow it. <laughs> no. There's not much to say. Yeah, literally. Regarding its air, <laughs> you made your decision. <laughs> there's no point of saying sorry now. Yeah, that literally. Is cool. Especially because ISIS has been defeated. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's one, of, it's one of the well, not that I say defeated, but like for the majority. Really like when she left, when yeah. she left, they were in. It was, it was in the peak, and everyone yeah. was like, "Oh, these people are gonna take over the world." So the she's like, "Ah, right, nah, these guys are on the winning streak. Let me go over there. I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be part of this. I'm gonna be part of this." And then you know, um, everything gets finessed. Yeah. Then ISIS is now pulling out of Syria. Like they're in such small numbers, almost out. She's like, "This isn't working out. Let me see if I can get back to the UK." No, they're not much. You're done. Thing.